This here is my 1992 Nissan 300ZX twin turbo. This will be the manual transmission that I've just removed from it. And this is my pressure washer because I've got transmission fluid all over the driveway. So as you can tell, things didn't quite go the plan. Stick around. Yep, that's oily. So this is the problem. Yep, it's leaking out of here. Obviously this is the transmission casing. As the sun pit's leaking between there, the only thing what can be between there is the rear main seal. So to do that, transmission's got to come off to get transmission off. These exhaust pipes have got to come off. Prop shaft's got to come off, which is behind the exhaust pipes and each shield. And then we've got to get the clutch and the flywheel off. So first on the agenda, anything that's going to come off, we're going to WD-40 it. So yeah, WD-40 up there where it goes on to the down pipes. Didn't film it because you can't see it. Be a different size around the back. Looking all inaccessible. So the pair, if you take that nut off, there's still a bolt in there, and if you can't take that nut off because you can't get to it. So what that means is I'm gonna have to take the exhaust off right back to there where I could get to the bolts, which means this is gonna have to come off. Which means more WD-40 because that's not been off for a while. And that's not working. Yeah. So that one there I got halfway out and then I stopped because it made a funny sound, that kind of bolt snapping sound. So I sprayed some more WD-40 in there. This one, the head's rounded. Yeah, that's not a good sound. Oh, I think it's coming out. Bad. Yep, yeah, that's out. Now this is going to be interesting, because the head is knackered. However, there's never problems, always solutions. And then we're going to put these back where we found them so we don't lose them. So up here we got two 17s, one there, one there, and a missing snappy one. And this AIV thing's right in the way, but <laughs> you'll delete that in a bit. That's not coming off anytime soon. Oh, neither is that. We'll get back to that. In the meantime, this AIV could come off because A, it's gonna have to come off anyway, and B, it's a load of shit. And uh, yeah, that's rounded. I currently have a socket set as an headrest. Yep, that's off ish. So move around the other side and obviously that's not a 17 this side so we've got to just poke random uh, sockets up there and see what it is. Let's try a 12. Be 
can see what I'm doing with it. And it's bigger than a 12. Yep, that'll be a 13 round this side. So you need more heavy duty up to the side than this side. Oh, great. Yeah. It'll also be a rounded 13. Seriously, you do not know how long that took. So this damn pipe, loose. It's loose at the other end. The other side, it's got one bolt on what's rounded off. That was rounded off as well, but it's come out. quite heavy yeah I'm gonna get that off well this side um, that one came out eventually with a shed load of WD-40 that one there's no stud there anyway and this one I put loads of WD-40 on it and eventually it rounded. So I've been out and I've brought a six point socket and it's broken it free. Oh, all the bolts are out. Oh, yep, that'll be that. And we're on here again. Back in, didn't we? Yep, that was my kneecap, and this just needs to come off here somehow. on that so next we're going to get this off so I can get to that prop shaft what's underneath there can't remember if I sprayed these earlier or not give them another go nice ow so to a little guess on these, these are 10 mil and they're tight. Now what I need to do now is get the prop shaft off so I can pull it out the back of the gearbox. Now what I've 
believe you're supposed to do is undo those bolts there and then you can pull the whole thing off. But I think I've seen people do it before where you take off the uh, carrier bearing and then it will pop down in the middle and it will pop down enough for you to pull it out. Big fat 19mm bolt. So if they don't come off. So these are not a 19, these are a 17. And they're on. Proper on. Well, I was going to show you getting that off the breaker bar because I got that one off the breaker bar, but that's failed. Ah, there we go. Right, that's probably heavy. I feel that I should probably put a jack under there or something and then undo the bolts. Or maybe just undo it and see what happens. Because uh, it can't go anywhere because that's bolted to that. So it can only come to where it's going to dangle. We'll take this one out first because it's on the wrong side. It's heavy, but not majorly heavy. Okay, that's kind of there. It's not going to come out of there without taking that off. But we have to take that off anyway. So nothing gained, nothing lost. Nothing gained, nothing. So nothing gained, nothing lost. So I made a discovery. That goes in there. That's an 8 mil Allen bolt. However, that does not want to come off. And there's also nowhere to work with that. And then there's some around the back. There's quite a few on there. So what I've decided and what I've realized is there's four bolts here, which are 17 mil, which are also very stiff. So I've uh, put some uh, WD-40 on them. I'm gonna leave them a little while. If I take these four out, this bit will come down and then I've put this back on. So I've got some leverage on that. 
and then I could take this off and then this little bit will come down and pull out the back. Yeah, this is very comfortable. So I managed to get that one, that one and uh, the one round there out with a socket. However, I can't get a socket on that one because, well, that's in the way and there's no leverage. And these are dis not designed to be done with a socket. It's supposed to be done with a 17mm spanner. However, I couldn't find my 17mm spanner, so I had to crack on with the socket. But, next day, been out and brought some seven pound socket set and the biggest one is a 17. I just can't get leverage on it, I've given in. I've jacked the back of the car up and we're gonna turn the diff with the wheels. Timber. Uh, yeah, that's off So yeah, we've uh, separated the back part of the prop shaft from the front part of the prop shaft Still got one bolt in on the hanger If I take that bolt out That should come down and then hopefully I can pull it out the back of the gearbox Ah, well, should come out. Well, as you can tell, <laughs> that just came out of there. So I put them back on there so I don't lose them and I know where to go. Those are back in there. I have a funny feeling when I put that back together with that, I'm going to have to put that in the gearbox and then I'm going to have to rotate the wheels to rotate this part so that it lines up. So back of the gearbox, uh, this will be where the shifter connects, it's got some working out to do. Um, what I believe I'm going to have to do, because I don't want to really be taking anything apart in the top of the car as well, I want to try and get it all from underneath. I think if I take this bolt out of here, not in the bolt there, that separates the actual gear stick the bottom of the shifter from the linkage here which uh, changes gear in the gearbox however this is fixed to the top of the car inside and it's also fixed to the gearbox but i believe it's just uh it's just two bolts here and one bolt there because the other one's missing
So disconnected the uh, linkage here, which goes to this nut and bolt here, which is for the gear shifter. And here there was two bolts that I took out. The other side there was one bolt, which basically takes this bracket, which is attached to the gearbox off, which is also attached to the shifter. This is the front part of the crankcase. This is the clutch fork. So basically this pulls back and forwards, which operates the clutch, which is between there and this here is an hydraulic line which basically operates this piston which pushes that we need to disconnect this piston thing from the gearbox and there is a bolt here and a bolt here in order to do so these are 40 mil bolts and they've been on some time so we are using a breaker bar As you can see here, I've already disconnected these connectors here, which uh, I believe is for the starter motor. However, I'm going to disconnect the battery before I start messing about with that. So next, uh, the starter's got to come off. There's two big bolts there and there. But to get to them, I believe I'm going to have to possibly take this heat shield thing off. In fact, no, I'll get to them, but I need to take this heat shield off because there's going to be an earth wire there somewhere that I'm going to need to disconnect. So that's just uh, dripping on my phone, which is new. Might just put that over there. These are a 10 mil or a posi drive, and posi drive will just round off. So we'll go for the 10. There you go. Yeah, marvellous. Uh, unscrewed. Yep, that's off. I'm not entirely sure that should wobble like that before I've undone the bolts. So now it's time to take off this earth strap here. It's a big massive earth strap behind there, you can't see it. Luckily I've got a 13mm with me and it is a 13. And it wasn't exactly tight. So up here what we've got, if you can see it, there's a 19mm there and there's 19mm here which you can't get a blooming socket on. This one's not in, probably because you can't get the socket on it because that's in the way. And that one up there, that one's loose. Yeah. this is dirty should go up and off there but it's not doing it just yet oh, I've loosened that that's disgusting right, not having it so I managed to get the socket on the 19mm because once I've took that out there's a little bit of movement Movement. That's uh, yeah. That's rounded, or oh, it's not nineteen. Starter is out. So well, that's the gearbox. That's under the car, and that's the transmission tunnel. That's very tight. What we got here is a. Uh, Leaf three, maybe four electrical connections, uh, which are connected to the gearbox. Uh, this here is the loom 
uh, which obviously connects the starter motor and it connects to all these connectors as well. One will be for speed sensor, one will be for reverse light and there'll be something for something else probably. Um, they're going to be very awkward to disconnect there. So what I've done is this loom was kind of in some ties up there. So I've undone the ties and I've pulled the loom down so I've got plenty of slack on it. So when I lower the gearbox down, I could take the connectors off with the gearbox down. The bell housing bolts here, which are holding the bell housing here to the block. So there's one here. There should be a bolt coming through this way, which holds this dust shield on. <laughs> That's not there. Um, don't know if there's supposed to be one there, but obviously the bolt that's going through the bell housing to the uh, transmission, bell housing to the uh, block is holding on that dust cover though. And then there is another bolt that's coming from behind, I believe, going into here into the bell housing there's one up there and then there's a top bolt which is even further up which you can't see so what i need to do is take these off here with a jack underneath this uh, cross member here and i lower this cross member which will then uh, tilt the engine back on the engine mounts which are over there somewhere and then the engine will lean on the firewall which is up there somewhere but i should be able to see the top bolts and get to them should So the cross member is now on the jack, central. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo these three bolts here, three bolts over there as well, which will involve crawling out the car and crawling back under the car. And then we're going to lower this slowly whilst going checking under the bonnet that nothing's crushing anything. And what should happen is this should tilt back a little bit. The engine should tilt back on its mounts but not go any further in the firewall but not crush anything at the same time which should then give some more access up the top there to find those top bolts So these are 14s and obviously they require the breaker bar because they've been on a while. That one's also got an earth on it. So that's all the bolts out there, all the bolts out there. So the only thing holding up this cross member now is the jack. So what we're gonna do is uh, just release it a little bit. Not a lot. So we come down about 10 mil. So what's happening is the engine is tilted back here towards the firewall. And what we've just got to keep an eye on is on this side here, there is, which you can't see very well, but there's a metal water hose here, which at the moment's about 20 mil away from the firewall. And then round this side here, the uh, clutch master, that's about 10 or 15 mil. It's down there, about 10 or 15 mil off the back of the um, plenum. So back round at the jack, we're gonna bring this down very slightly more. And then we go back up round there and check progress. So right up here, if you reach right up here and right up here, 
There's no fucking bolt in the top. So around the tudder side, and not only is the tudder side really oily, this side, yep, there's a top bolt up there. So that's gonna be really bloody awkward. For the time it's taken me, I would have thought that was like a metre long. Yeah, that bolt has took three hours. So to get that out, I originally made some kind of contraption thing with a breaker bar to break it free. And then there was no way in hell I could get any ratchets on it. So I've been using a 14mm spanner, which um, that angle doesn't help. And it keeps slipping off and you can move like that much and then you have to find the bolt again. So yeah, that's why it's taken three hours. On the plus side, there's no top bolt on the other side. Because I can't think why, but they didn't bother putting it back in. So I've uh, re-bolted the cross member back up there for now. So that the gearbox isn't going to drop down when we start taking bolts out. I have put the jack underneath where the transmission meets the bell housing, which um, allegedly is the centre of gravity. Allegedly. And I've gone round with the WD-40 and I've got the bolts that I can find because my transmission doesn't seem to have all of them. And I believe they're all going to be 14 mil, so I'm going to let that sort of uh, settle in a bit. And then we're going to take these bolts out and then we'll take the bracket bolts out and then we'll try and pull it back and lower it down on the jack without dropping it on the floor. Yes, I am losing the will to live, in case you're wondering. Yep, this shit seriously is happening. Don't you dare fall off. This is going to take a long time. Yeah, every bolt needs some kind of twisty contraption. So that's all the bolts out. Top bolts got out where we tilted the gearbox back. Obviously the just below top bolts, which are also really awkward, especially this one because the turbo seems to be in a really awkward place this side. Then um, there should be a bolt that comes in this way somewhere. It holds this sort of dust cover thing in there. I haven't got that. Um, there was a bolt there, a bolt there, and then mirrored onto the side. Same thing on the other side, there wasn't one on the dust cover. And on this side, I'm gonna double check, but I'm pretty sure there's no top bolt. So took these out both sides. Transmission is rested on the jack there on the center of gravity, allegedly. Um, all the bolts, as far as I know, is at that end. I took off most of the connectors, there's one connector I can't get off, but I think there should be enough wire to drop it down. Um, I've put some old pillows down here at the front, just in case the bell housing's a bit heavier than I think. But it should be the centre of gravity there, so I've been told. So all that needs to be done is to pull it backwards and then lower it down.
he says. So, <laughs> it's not coming off. And the reason it's not coming off is right there. I missed the bolt, which comes in that way. And it's positioned right next to the oil tree and the turbo. You can't get a blooming breaker bar in there. The only thing you get on there is a rigs banner and then you've got no leverage. So, yeah. So to get that out, concocted at all. Yeah, that is a spanner with half it missing. That's a long bar. Self-explanatory. However, <laughs> that's the bolt and uh, well, it'll still come off, but it ain't going back in. Okay, you've got a big gap now. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> but I need to get a gap. Right. Yeah. That needs to come back. I think back. you need to come down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You, but you, it's better you... for shafts out. That's the trouble. Where's your, where's your torch? Need to pull, well, need you come can, back this way. You can see your... Right, yeah, yeah, let's come down a little bit. Not too much. Mm. Right. Mm. That's better. Oh, there you go. Right, leave it there, mate. <laughs> yeah, we come back a little bit, but yeah, it's still not past the clutch of the flywheel. Catching up here. Yeah. So come down slightly more. Yeah, go on then. That's better. Oh, you catch it again now, I think. Uh, we're not connected to that, so that's good. Oh, we are fucking connected to that, even though we're not connected to it. Huh? It's fucking connected here. No, I think it's just catching on it. Okay. Uh, Oh, no, we're going that way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Am I past the cluster flywheel? Yes. You can see cluster flywheel? Yes. And we do doors out. The shaft. <laughs> I need to go get my torch and have a quick yeah, look at that. Yeah, I think you need to. You can see your full flywheel now. Yeah. I just. You can see there's a rubber and it's just catching on it. I don't know whether it's pulling on it. Yeah, you need to see if the input shafts out. But yeah. Which you can't see because it's in the fucking middle. Yeah. No input shafts still in. So if we look in the uh, inspection chamber, you can see that the input shaft is still slightly in. So we need to come back a bit further. It's down a bit more. Doesn't want to move, yeah. Oh, right, okay. We'll connect to there as well, which is going to be a problem. I'll get it off. Oh, that's... Oh, that, that shift is off.
you kind of back where you were. It was a little bit more that way because it's come down. Well, I think the input shaft is out. Yeah, I think it just it needs comes to... down and back. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't think there's any way. For... No, it's got to come down and back. Yeah, it's got to come to down go. and back. Yeah. But this loom here has got to be enough for it to come down as well because oh, yeah. I can actually see the connector now, so I might be able to do this. Oh, um, where is it? Do you want me to hold that? Yeah. Oh, can't wait, it's fucking up there somewhere. Yeah. yeah. I don't know where it is. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. Look, come from it. No, that's right. I don't know where that is. There's a connector up there somewhere, which you can't see. Oh. All right. Okay. Yeah, so down and back at the same time. That's the plan. Yeah, okie okay. <laughs> flywheel I see it go oh, that way poor blimey there you oh, go yeah. hang on it's going sideways on there though Go to you for sure. Let's come back. Yeah. Coming off the fucking pad. All right. You don't want to be there. You want to be further back because that's good. It's, if it goes, it's going your way. It's only on there a little bit. Oh, it's only on there a little bit. It's leaning on you. It go. I think you need to go up. This is going to pull on you. Something inside. Right. Now it needs to go there. Hold on, you need to bring your jack this way because it's it's not on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's tetchy. That's all for it. Uh. Try going down again. Yeah, that's Just... very heavy that is, isn't it? Yeah. Because uh, it's sliding on that, it's it's caught on it's caught on the input shaft, isn't it? That's totally off. I don't know what it's catching on. I feel like it's just. only a little bit on there look look how much that's on there yeah not very much yep right. could have done with a bit of that wood that you've got on your front seat under there to give you more <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> that needs to get back that way, doesn't it? If you go up and push it back on, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's gonna move. Okay, whoa, okay. Don't need to. Okay. See, it so needs to go that way. Yeah, it's just. Because it goes back on again. It's caught in. 
Yeah. It, it throws itself back on again. And then it's... Oh, that's better. That's better. That, that did good. If you can do that a bit, then a bit more. I need to straighten it. Mm. It needs to, it needs to come that way again. And it's chucked itself back on it again. Just go up a, a wee bit. Get it off that flywheel properly. Oh, that's coming right off the side here. Shit. No, no, don't shake, don't shake. Something's. I don't want it to break your flywheel. It's really going to put pressure on it. Yeah. That's it. It's back on again now. Yeah, it's, it's trying to lean your way because this bloody pad rotates that's the trouble the jack's gone over here now mm. i don't know what's holding it at the front no how far is does that go in it needs to be far i don't know well i'm well out of the way Mm -hmm. I've put transmission fluid in now, darling. Mm -hmm. oh, very well clear. Yeah. Be out of there. Mm -hmm. Careful because you will sit so bad up. Oh, that's better. Yeah, but it's not coming out. Yeah, don't pull that out and put it into a gear. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, transmission is off <laughs> and it's bleeding because that did not go as I wanted it to go. And it turns out that I have a uh, cooler on it which uh, is connected to those pipes up there, so I need to find out how to get them off and uh, also find that electrical connector which I couldn't find and get that off as well. Well, Jack's well lubricated. There she is. So, Tranny's out of that. That is how not to remove your transmission. Coming up in the next video, how to use a pressure washer. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.